I am the Oracle 007, and I approve this message. So let the games begin. I was actually introduced to Kwame Brown through Lovely T's uh, broadcast. And shout out to Lovely T. She is a mother, a businesswoman, a tea specialist, or whatever it is that you call someone who uh, pulls together tea flavors and etc. She's also a beauty entrepreneur, uh, sports fan. She has multiple streams of income, and it's really appreciated for anyone, especially someone like me who's dreaming to make it where she is. You know, however, I knew her as a celebrity truth teller, and I don't want to call her a gossip blogger. Um, whenever she comes with the information, she comes with everything. And in this instance, me not being a sports fan, I managed to learn a, quite a bit about sports through Lovely T. So when this sister stood in her defense of this young man, and I'm talking about Kwame as she sipped her tea and his much needed attack against Charlemagne of the Breakfast Club. I know her to be a woman who doesn't just jump on things without having either end up knowledge or bringing receipts to the table. When I heard Kwame Brown going in on everyone, I heard the Geechee man, the distant relative, the voices of men whom outside of my father, my uncles, brothers, cousins, friends, the men that we grew up with, not all of them, because some of them do display quite a bit of feminine energy. It happens. There will be one, an anomaly out of all of them. And these men dripped black masculinity. That's what I heard when I heard Kwame. So, you know, I fell in love with him immediately. I heard the voice and the breath of my favorite TV dad, James Evans. You know, there was no denying his black strength. This was not a guy or someone who would be under the direction or tutelage of J. Edgar Hoover that could simply just be controlled, even if it was with money, just to try to destroy his community. You know, just when you don't even bother looking at some of these men anymore because of their complaints, I've heard everything. Either they can't deal with black women, and these are the guys in groups where any day I was in the military, they could be carted off to war or even a jungle training where they'd have to learn how to deal with men who knew their own lands, jungles, cultures, and more importantly, their women. And the biggest problem that they were having in their lives, despite so many of them getting in trouble in the military for nothing, just being black, their biggest problem was black women. And I didn't understand that because many of us were raised by both parents. We were not raised to be doormats. So anyway... <sighs> What was the other complaint? Uh, they wanted to be treated like bad bees or princesses. And I didn't understand that either. They needed the keys to your car, your apartment, and even money for gas and a little spending money. And if you think I'm joking, I can recall watching a reaction video a few months ago from Yanni. And shout out to Real Talk with Yanni. Sadly, there was an entire black man that who had decided he was going to create a video on how to move in on women by never leaving her apartment and parking his Timberlands or boots or whatever, who knows how those were paid for in his apartment and, and making hamburgers. The, the whole scenario was insane and I cannot say that it blew my mind. And yes, I said this was on the internet. So all of this was about to be, it was all about how to not be a contributor, but still have a fly place to stay. 
And then I, I, this was another thing like you want submission. You know, I'm no longer in the church. I pretty much had to pull up the definition on this one as it pertained to the realm of relationships. And why? Because you want the maximum return with zero to minimal investment and submission. I'm like submission. You want submission. You know, my dad, my uncles, these, these men never had to ask for submission. You know why? They automatically got it. They never had to ask for it because they were making an investment and in contributing to the relationships with their wives, their children, wives and children. Okay. Their families. That was their investment. And I always loved the teachings of Miles Monroe and the Most High Rest His Soul. I loved how he always instructed ladies to never accept and never allow men like that in your life. Like nobody should be driving off for the stuff that you work hard for. So don't do that. And when I heard Kwame's voice crying out in the wilderness, like John the Baptist, oh my goodness, it was like, a breath of fresh air, a ray of sunshine. Uh, it was like being Helen Keller and a voice you could hear and you could finally see. You know, just hearing him kind of made me question, is black masculinity truly dead? And I had to re-examine this thing. I was thinking to myself when I heard him, does Booker T. Washington live again? And I don't know how many of you had read up from slavery. Even if you don't have time to do it, please take an opportunity to check out that book on Audible. Dynamic. I was thinking, does James Evans of Cabrini Green live again? This man, and if any of you ever take an opportunity, of course, I bought the whole series of good times. This man was a man, man. Okay. Granted the situation they were in, he didn't want his wife to work. He wanted his wife to be at home to nurture his children. And that man put in some hours and anything that his family needed, he did his best to get. He did his very best. A woman can always respect a man with some vision. And that's what I loved when I heard Kwame. And this was not just the back and forth that he was having with everybody. But there's visions, their dreams are things he was putting together way before from the time that I believe that I joined where he had 5,000 followers to now well over 400,000. Brilliant. I was thinking, does Matthew live again? And Matthew is the character that I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Ernest J. Gaines novel, A Gathering of Old Men. Oh my gosh, this brother was James Evans. This, this, this was that guy. He did not play games with anybody. And it was set during a, I can't even say it was a simpler time in Louisiana. Please, if you don't have time to sit down and read that or just go watch the movie. They did a movie, The Gathering of Old Men and Lou Gossett plays Mathieu. And they, in addition to that, they also have the book again on Audible. Please go check it out. Revive yourself. These were men. And even as they're telling their stories from days of old, they are talking about men who they thought were men then. I loved it. And now, Sadly, we entered this new world stage of a new kind of debauchery where the radio hosts film themselves for the internet fame, where they jump up and smell the chairs of women celebrities who have just left them. Like, who, who does that? 
That is disgusting. Look, I'm a very big fan of Morris Chestnut. He is the finest thing walking to me and not even I, not even I. I would ask for a picture with him before I would ever do something so vile and disgusting. What does that get me? And why would I allow a child to see me doing that? What is the point? Not only that, you're teaching younger celebrities to watch women naked unknowingly, interview uninterested comedians through your playing around and fingering and tossing and lotioning up a bunkie on camera and, and gifting this person, you know, numerous sized dildos. Like, why would you do that? All while in the line in sight of children. And you apparently also have children. And then later on, shout out to self-talk. Who eventually locates information where you're saying a lot of people made a lot of money. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Was it worth it? Anyway. I wanted to examine everything that had pretty much started this because I think it's important that we examine the feminine kickback that we hear from this guy. So, you know, without further ado, let's take a listen. Hey, why you call Becky with that? Hey, let me let me, let me let me say something, man. I need a I need a second, man. First of all, y'all know Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Those are my partners. You can catch uh all the smoke podcasts on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. I was texting with Matt last night, but let me tell y'all something. Leave Kwame Brown alone. I don't know if y'all know, but you could do a little research. Kwame Brown was born in Charleston, South Carolina. I don't think I've ever met Kwame, but I know a lot of his family. His family lived in Moss Corner, South Carolina. His father's name was Willie Brown. I don't know how many kids Willie Brown had. I don't know how many siblings Kwame Brown got, but I went to school with his sister, and I went to school with one of his, his brothers. Let me tell y'all something. Kwame's father in the 90s, I remember this story. He beat a woman with an axe handle. It was his girlfriend. And the rumor was he buried her alive. He buried her in the area that I grew up in, if I remember correctly. I've been trying to call my dad since yesterday to, to, to confirm the whole story because I literally forgot about this until yesterday. But the, the woman died and he got arrested. Uh, if he's still alive, he's in prison for life because he got caught because he left South Carolina after the murder and came back for his paycheck. Let me tell you something else. His other brother, I don't know if him and Kwame were close. But his other brother shot his baby mama several times and then killed himself. That was like in 08. And his other brother, Kwame's other brother, just went to jail for murder like three years ago. All of this you can Google. I'm saying all that to say, leave Kwame leave alone. Him. That man leave has been alone. quiet for 20 years. He don't bother nobody. Clearly all that, you know, all, all that he's a bust stuff gets to him. And you don't know what people are going through or have been through. But I've seen folks snap for less. And it looks like, you know, Kwame is snapping. And if you look at the history of men in his family... You would know his, his men and his family have a history of snapping. There it is. Like, did you hear it? Whether you are a man or woman or whatever it is that you identify as, did you hear this response? And, and you can't even lie about it. This is a response of a man who is operating in a feminine spirit while attempting to shut down a man before he even has an opportunity to respond to him. He starts off talking about Kwame's father beating some woman, returning for paycheck, not knowing how many children that this man had, as if this family was some type of crime syndicate and then he further indulges you with the fact that he went to school with his sister and brother and mentioned all this other stuff 
you know, and I would like to ask Patches, what is the purpose of this? What did this have to do with Kwame's response to Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson? Stephen Jackson, that I refer to as Black Gums, White Teeth, and that's his Indian name. Because I do agree. That's too much white for the charcoal gums. But I'm being petty here. What did that have to do with anything? What did that have to do with Kwame? You know, are you responsible for the sins of your father that you couldn't contact since the day before? And why didn't your dad call you back? Like when I call my dad and I'm an older woman, he immediately responds. He picks up the phone whenever his kids need him. What was the point? No one in this air in this entire conversation ever made a comment or a statement about Kwame except for him. And as a matter of fact, someone will assume was DJ Envy only asked why Kwame referred to Matt Barnes as Becky with the good hair. Because that was his whole prelude to the big gossip drop. He introduced Matt and Steven Jackson as his partners. And then he just goes into, you know, I'm going to say leave Kwame Brown alone, y'all. Uh, and additionally, what got me, it might not have gotten to Kwame, was that um, clearly all that he's a bus stuff gets to him. Really, does it? Because he named his pages Bus Life. I don't know if it's like that on Instagram, but I definitely know that this is what I'm seeing on YouTube. So it can't be getting him too much. And if I had to be a bust, I want to be a bust like him because he looks like he's living fine to me. Okay? Ladies, y'all check those shoulders, that deep voice, the beard, the white teeth, teeth that actually matches gums, beautiful. He doesn't seem like he smiles a lot. He does seem like he laughs a lot, but when he smiles, did I mention the fact that it was beautiful? His teeth are perfect, okay? Did anybody see the full body spread of him where he's standing? This guy looks like he's very strong, okay? Very nice calf muscles too. But anyway, that that's enough. Let me get back to complaining about this. You know, him saying that he's been quiet for 20 years and he doesn't bother anybody. And if it looks like he was snapping, what was the purpose of all of that? You know, if I say, did you plead to a lesser charge? And again, shout out to self-talk. And inclusive of whoever this Maurice Spears is that does the music and the remixing of everything that Kwame is saying, listen, Mama's Cooking is my jam. Y'all need to go ahead and just lay down that track someplace that I can buy it and put it on my phone. But don't include the cursing and stuff because when the call comes in, I just need it to just play the mama's cooking part. So if you could find a way to just redo that, I find that to be great. But shout out to you all for your wonderful talents. But um, I mean, when he pled to a lesser charge, what was the purpose of sending Kwame Brown in self-talk? A cease and desist letter. And I believe them. I don't know them personally, but I believe them. Because this is how people do when a dog takes a bone and runs with it. And then you sit up here and you bring his bone to him. And so he's been acting the clown and now the clown done bit back. Then you want to get upset and send cease and desist letters. Not only that. Because you found out that that wasn't doing anything for them. Then you wanted to turn around and come on the air and apologize half-heartedly and then say stuff like, you know, you guys just want to see two black men fighting. No, what we, what you should have done, if you were a real Geechee, because I'm a Gullah Geechee, there are just some things that we just don't do. You should have kept your mouth shut. 
We don't run around with everybody's news. And for those people who do run around with everybody's news, you wind up getting got one way or the other. Again, that's a lot of feminine energy. Who does that? Because I don't even do that. And I'm a full woman, hips and everything. Okay. I felt like that kind of hit you a little close to home for you to do that. That when you said that they wanted to see two men going back and forth, there would have only been one man in that whole thing. And he wouldn't have even been arguing with you. He would have been asking you some questions, sir. But you would have been known as the effeminate instigator because that's how you came off. Who does that? And you say you were raised in Monk's Corner or do you just say that that's where you're from? So, or you went to go visit your grandma or something during the summers. What is it? Because you cannot be a real Geechee out here doing dumb stuff that we see you doing. Anywho. I hate to have to ask, is black masculinity dead? But sadly, I can remember even hearing from a report that was done on Sex Explained, and I believe that that is a feature on Netflix, where the woman who's making the announcement actually says that the average man now has less than half of the testosterone than his grandfather had. <clears throat> so you heard me correctly, right? And I'm getting this from them. The average man has less than one half of the testosterone that his grandfather had, not even half of what his father had half of what his grandfather had. So please note when I hear Kwame Brown saying that he can see why the ladies are so frustrated now, because if he is a man and I didn't agree with him here, where he says men talk like this all the time because people kept saying, we haven't been hearing men talk like you. And he said, men talk like this all the time. Nope. He's starting to find out now from these foolery typed responses <laughs> that he is receiving from a lot of men for no reason who are just trying to start arguments with him over stuff that doesn't require an argument. I am glad that he's seeing it, but it's shameful because even as he's doing a reaction to it, you're beginning to see this is what the world is seeing. Now everybody's seeing what we're seeing. There are men, men. Yes, we appreciate them. We love them. However, this like the guys that he's having to spar with, I can imagine what he must feel like because when I hear it and I'm watching it, I automatically see it. Lots of effeminate energy. Anyway. So I want to take a moment <laughs> after this to kind of just Listen to the octaves even. And when these men are just talking in their normal everyday lives or addressing Kwame. So let's take a listen. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee. All right, Charlemagne, the guy we... You came on the YouTube for blood. You haven't let up off of anybody. We don't hear nobody talking about you no more. You the one victimizing niggas now, and now you going back to playing victim again. No, it don't work like that, bitch, nigga. We see you. I see, nigga. Yeah. I see you. I really didn't want to do this. 
I really didn't want to do this. I was going to leave Kwame Brown alone. I wasn't going to say a damn word. You didn't even know I'm answering it. You did, not, you I didn't get to ask you yet. What am I going to ask you? No, you had already asked a question, and I'm I, trying to answer I it. I didn't get to finish. You cut me off. Can I complete my sentence? Oh, my God. Can I complete? You know, was I wrong? Now, you can hear it for yourself in stating that it does appear that perhaps more men have less than one half of the testosterone that their grandfathers had. I can't be wrong in saying it. And I'm not wrong in disagreeing with Kwame when he said, men talk like this all the time. No, he's starting to find out what we hear and sometimes you can't even help the environment that you're hearing it in this is what many of us are hearing all the time this is why he's being lauded and applauded i mean <laughs> and did you all hear when Hassan said, I see you, I see you, I see you. Yeah. Did did y'all hear that? Because if you heard it, <laughs> I'm thinking you have Hubble telescope for eyes. You should be able to see anything and everything. You should be able to see all things. So... And why was he even talking like that? Everything is an argument. And let's not forget the last one that I posted with that. Oh my God. Why? When is a man? I don't, I don't even think I've ever heard my daddy say, oh my God, never. Anyway this is what's happening so you know by all means whenever i hear kwame talking about bottling up some of mama's cooking and sprinkling that you know sending it out in packets yes please make sure that mine reaches my area please because it is frustrating this is what the women are having to deal with. And this is why there was a question of black masculinity. And then you come on the scene and then we hear some of the brothers even calling into your show. And we hear even their masculinity. So for that, I'm grateful. If there was anything that I could speak to in this moment, in this movement, as it pertains to Kwame Brown's reemergence, I would say that I'm ecstatic about it. I don't look to him as a leader because we should all be leaders. I am very proud, however, when he's going over the businesses in the community, as well as just hearing some of the other brothers who are out here actually doing the work. They're not talking about giving money to, you know, certain people. They are doing the work and in investing in their community. The more this continues to happen, our community is going to continue to explode in the best direction possible. And I have to say this. <clears throat> When I saw this all happening, I felt like Kwame was in a little bit deeper trouble than what he actually knew. Because with all the talk of divesting and with the red pillars, MGTOW, this, that, and the other ones, and you know, the we hate black women haters group, and you know, we hate black men haters group. I kept seeing that there was eventually going to become an area of no longer interested in those things. 
um, I felt like he was going to wind up shaking up those communities. And one, because we've witnessed the crying ourselves, we can already see where that community has already been shaken up, where this YouTuber has nothing else better to do but to continue to keep going back and forth with other YouTubers claiming that they stole this, that, and the other thing from him. But <clears throat> this is what happens. His message was a very cancerous message to the community. And another thing that I would have to say that Kwame has kind of allowed me to do, and I don't want to say force me to do because, you know, I am naturally somebody who will listen to both sides of an argument. Listen, I just got done sitting here listening to Senator Rand Paul and Dr. Fauci going at each other's throats because I was trying to find out who is Dr. Fauci talking to calling them a liar. And not that I'm too much for any of this, but by the time it was all over, you could see where the sides were coming from. And then you could see where more um, deception was being played on top of deception in that whole conversation. So Kwame helped me to at least be able to listen because that YouTuber that he actually had on is somebody that I would never listen to, but I could at least go in there and listen. And I saw the fall coming as far as these two, <laughs> this relationship betwixt the two of them being broken up. I'm very happy about it. But, you know, as far as listening to other people that he had on there, like Angela Statton, I think that was her name. You know, that was a wonderful listen to because I hadn't heard anything from her directly. It hadn't been good just outside of whom she was supporting in the elections. And, and it was weird because I don't even care. But I have to say this. I can see that black masculinity is not dead, not just from Kwame, but from all of those brothers. We appreciate you. And the women that they have by their sides who have always been there in the community. I want to say the most high bless the soul of Kwame Brown's mother. The way he speaks about her. Ladies, listen to that. You got to watch how a man speaks about women. Because if you check out Self Talk's most recent video on a certain bug-eyed individual and you listen to how he is talking about Kwame Brown's father while inebriated. I mean, the nasty things that this man says, it's too much. So I'm grateful that Kwame Brown has made a reemergence and I'm grateful for everything that's being done in the, com in the community because from what I am able to see, it appears that there's going to be a whole lot of paying it forward. The beautiful black businesses that are coming forward, uh, providing their information and how he's out there kind of promoting them, even wearing their stuff. But Kwame, just be careful because everything is not always everything. Make sure you do your research before you uh, put those shirts on and, and hats, but these people have done an awesome job and they put themselves out there and it's opening up even more. So I personally want to thank you, but I'm just grateful that I expect to see more leaders to be exposed from this entire thing. And now, honestly, I do believe that black masculinity can also make a reemergence. I'm grateful for that. But I do want to make a fine note of listening to this brother in his own words. He says some very deep and powerful stuff in these three segments. So let's get into it. 
Charlemagne the God. Don't have people call on my phone now. You boy, you very influential, boy. I'm getting a lot of calls behind you boys. You boys very connected. Now, I know I'm right that y'all in that damn boys club. I can tell you that, boy. But I swear to God, I can't even look at my phone. My phone been on Do Not Disturb all day. I missed so many damn calls because these niggas calling me. I got motherfucker calling me from the East Coast to the West Coast. Everybody telling me to leave these niggas alone. Damn. Well, guess what? Nope. They said they wanted to have a motherfucking dope guy. We don't fucking know. Yeah, hey, y'all said y'all were joking. I'm joking too. <laughs> I'm just joking a little better than you. Now you niggas want. Now you niggas don't want to joke no more. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, I wish you would have told me what yeah, kill my whole family killers and watch out for me pound so hurt about basketball, even though he ain't mentioned shit about basketball or convincing us or nothing. Let's just throw that in there because we think people dumb. We think people would believe that same old fucking broken record ass story. Even though I told people what y'all idiots was gonna do. But Charlemagne, that pressure on you. Cause boy, there's some smoke growing from, uh, up under your head. But Angela, you got a decision to make, sis. You got acting like you got them like black women. You got them that's sad. You got this patch-eyed demon. <laughs> you, got, you got that patchy-eyed demon. Cause <laughs> hey, look here. It's funny how you punk-ass bullies can't take nobody talking back about y'all. And then y'all so stupid. That's a damn shame. Y'all some mental bitches. Y'all put these motherfuckers... Y'all... It's just amazing to me that I told the people what y'all were going to do. Some bitches been doing it every single fucking day. It's a goddamn shame. Charlemagne, I'm not going to get up off your ass until you tell me who protecting you, boy. They just as bad as you. See? I think Angela Yee I think that light skinned punk, uh, uh, DJ Envy, that nigga that need a leash by his wife, I guarantee you, when that nigga go home, she put that nigga on a leash. <laughs> you look like you into that s and shit, punk. Well, she whooped your ass for cheap. Every time you come in there, you want some, she probably beating the dog shit out you when you get some. <laughs> Ah, nigga, you got to get a spanking before sex, boy. That's a goddamn shame. You got to get a spanking before sex. You got to go ahead and leave, nigga. You ain't going to never be able to be a man around that woman, punk. You probably go there and cook. Take You do everything, don't you? <laughs> Ain't you not, nigga. You done cheated on me. Fuck, I look like the some breakfast, nigga. Why don't you get the bitch if I'm 20 years ago and get you some breakfast? Everything you say probably revert back to that up. <laughs> okay, baby. Nigga, the next thing I want you to say out your mouth, nigga, okay, baby, that's all you supposed to say to her, nigga. Huh? You sitting up on the show talking about you love black women. And you got the nerve to talk about Kevin Samuels. And I don't like when somebody talking about women and this and this and that. But you like when your punk ass co host take advantage of them with Spanish fly and get on the goddamn air and talk about it. Nigga, fuck y'all nasty, sick some bitches. Sitting here trying to say somebody crazy when everybody can see that you nasty motherfuckers are sitting around here being the, the bad boys club. <laughs> everybody want to rally together. Well, since then, you motherfuckers start worshiping humans. You motherfuckers worship people more than you worship God. It don't make no sense. You motherfucker, there's some of you niggas that'll swing on motherfucker by another man. You mother, they can't be the daddy that ain't in your house. See, we gotta fix this shit. We got a bunch of these uh, feminine males going out here looking for these goddamn somebody to be their leader. That they daddy. Shit don't make no goddamn sense. I am the Oracle 007, and yes, I approve this message. <laughs> 